This is Pasties Herb. We are a team on an assignment to build the fate of men and set their hearts on fire through the media system. With hundreds of insightful videos here on our channel, we hope to bless and bond with you. Don't forget to click the like button, turn on notifications, and subscribe. We love and celebrate you. So, there are 300 scriptures in the Bible on prayer. How many did I say? 300 on prayer. But there are 2,350 scriptures on finance. 2,350 on finance. Jesus spoke 37 parables. 23 of the parables of Jesus had to do with finance. 23 over 37 times 100 over 1 equals to 61%. 61% of the parables of Jesus had to do with finance. And yet you find that even when we... I still remember when I went to Bible school. They'll train you and they make you feel like you are guilty to challenge people to give to the Lord. When I talk today about becoming a millionaire, I, will, I might not talk about uh, giving to the church. It might be one of the points I make at some point. But I want you to capture what, where I'm trying to go. Sixty-one percent of the parables of Jesus are on finance. So was finance important to Jesus? Of course. But you find that when you begin to challenge people to see, to change their mind, they don't understand. They love what the colonial masters have created in Nigeria. They created a job mentality. Job mentality. That's why 5 a.m. on the way to VI, the roads are jammed. On the way to the island, the roads are jammed. Is it not so? Then, from 3 to from 3 p.m. to come back to the main line, the roads are jammed. The same rat race every day. The same rat race every day. The same rat race every day. Because the colonial masters, when they came to Africa, they didn't come to create wealth. They came to raise a civil service that would serve them. And they did that very well. So they created a mindset of job people. Our schools were to create people who know how to find jobs. And a job only keeps you J-O-B, just over broke. I told you it's going to be rough. And I've not even started yet. So if you want to create wealth, you have to realize. You have to come to the point where you realize that you need your own vehicle for the creation of wealth. Somebody say, my own vehicle. Oh, please say it louder. My own vehicle. So 61% of the parables of Jesus had to do with finance. Tell me some of the parables you know. I can't hear you, please. Huh? Parable of the talent. Talent in the Bible is not the ability to sing. It's not the ability to dance. Ah, oh my, any talent. The talent there was a gold, was like a gold bar. A gold bar, you know, they will, they, will, they, will, they will melt gold and make a bar of one kilo. One kilo of gold right now is at this morning's value. is $34,000. So when Jesus said a man was given five talents, three, two talents, one talent. The talent in the day of Jesus... Today's value is $527,000. So the man who was given one talent was given half a million dollars. 
The one who was given two talents was given one million dollars. How many can manage a business with half a million dollars? Let me see your hand. You are not raising your hand. Oh, the carriage you. Ah. Let me even tell you quickly a principle of business. Too much to start with is not the best. Even a little to start with is best because it keeps you on your cutting edge. So when Jesus talked about talent, what those people were given were serious money. Exactly the amount that was given to Ali Kodangote. It was given half a million dollars by his uncle. That was what was given to those men. The one who had one talent and buried it, he didn't say because it was inadequate. He said because he didn't want to spend his time and to be working hard for one man. So, so many of the parables of Jesus had to do with finance. Another parable? The parable of the lost coin. Luke chapter 15 has three parables there. Lost silver, lost son, lost sheep. S-S-S. Lost silver, lost son, lost sheep. The lost silver was the woman's dowry. She kept looking for it because she knew that without it, in Hebrew culture, they pasted the dowry on their head. They pasted it on their head and the thing fell. The lost son was the prodigal son who collected his, his uh, inheritance before the father died. Whereas the will of a testator does not come into effect until a testator dies. The lost sheep is the story of a man who left his capital to go and look for his profit. He had 99 sheep. The, the, one, the one lost was his profit. If he doesn't look for it, then he is at a loss. So the Bible is full of, all, all through the scriptures, all the parables of Jesus had to do with finance. Any other, one more, then I begin my teaching. Huh? The parable of the sower, fantastic, shows you investment. Many people, it isn't that money have not gone through their hand, but they don't know where to put it. Either that they are throwing it by the roadside, heavy parties, in spite of COVID, particularly the Yorubas, the Yorubas love party. So no COVID or no COVID, they will still hold party. They will throw the seed by the roadside. And then some people in business, they throw the seed among the thorns that choked it. And some again will throw the seed on hard ground. Businesses that have no evidence that they can do well. So listen, the scripture is so full. 2,350 scriptures have to do with finance. It is the desire of God to prosper you, to increase you. And unless you come to that place where you begin to change your thinking, even when I finish today, there is a limit to what I can do. The number one thing that must change is your thought pattern. Your thoughts and your talk. Your thought and your talk. If you don't change your thinking and your talking, no one can make you wealthy. But when you begin to change your thinking and change your talking, then your wealth can come. But you meet Christians, Nigerians, they say, "Ah, I just want to make heaven as if it was money that would make a man not to make heaven. Your thinking and your thought, because as a man thinks, so is he. Your thought has capacity to limit your life or to increase your life. Your thought has capacity to shut you down or to blow you up. Then your talk. If you learn the power of talking right and talk yourself into prospering, then things can change. Many believers will hear teaching on prospering. But they do not realize that unless I begin to wash my head, my mind, 
wash away all the kind of things that were said into my life when I was young by my father and the people around me who accepted poverty. We have statements that justify poverty. That's why we're saying change your thoughts. Statements like money does not grow on trees. Who told you? Depends on which tree you are referring to. Statements like uh, uh, remember the son of who you are. If you don't change your thought and if you don't change your talk, you can't come into wealth creation. So this morning, I want you to realize that God wants you to prosper. But before you can, there are foundations you have to lay for yourself. When you lay those foundations, you can then increase in wealth. I'm going to share as much, many as I can in the next 40 minutes. Number one, develop the right perspective on wealth. What's your opinion about wealth? The right perspective on wealth. What do I mean by the right perspective on wealth? You left church. You found yourself on the Korodu Road. As you were standing, two cars collided. One broken down small Volkswagen Beetle have just collided with uh, a Bentley and the Bentley was damaged when you looked at it how did you feel did you feel that good for him all this, all this money misroad is driving a Bentley in this Lagos that is your attitude to wealth I was at Abuja to preach in January. I was picked up from the airport in a Bentley Mulsan. That's one of my dream cars. I like Bentley Mulsan and the Rolls Royce Phantom. I'm not going to drive any other Rolls Royce except Phantom. As we were driving, we got to a point and Okada man was passing by and he said something like, 419. That's his attitude to wealth. That's the problem. Until you begin to change your attitude to wealth, it's impossible for wealth to flow to you because money is currency and it goes where it is respected. It is currency. It flows. It has a flow. It is like a water current. That's why it is called currency. So it's flowing to some people and it's flowing away from some. There are some people, even when they don't leave home, it's still flowing to them. So he sees us in a Bentley and the next thing is 419. You must have the right attitude to wealth. What is the right attitude to wealth for the believer? 2 Corinthians 8, 9. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Consider ye the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that he was so very rich, yet he became so very poor, that through his poverty ye might be rich. And God is able to make all grace abound unto you, in that you having all sufficiency in all things will abound unto all good works. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they will live their years in pleasure and their days in prosperity. Isaiah 1, 19. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. So your attitude to wealth and your perspective on wealth must change. You must see that wealth is good. I like you to scream, wealth is good. Oh, I want you to say it one more time, wealth is good. The day is going to come when members of this church, just one, will buy this kind of building for HCC. Shout amen with fire. Wealth only goes bad when it is wealth without a mission. Did you hear me? When it is wealth without a mission. 
Wealth must always have four missions. Mission number one must be to meet the need of your family. Mission number two must be to serve the Lord. Mission number three must be to touch your world. Mission number four must be to make your own life good. To make your own life good. Whoever says money is evil, he has not had money. So, the first one is to have the right perspective on money. The second one is to make your service count. If you want wealth to flow to you, what kind of service are you offering? If you don't have a business and a service that counts, nobody is going to come to you. What do I mean by making your service count? I'm saying do something, do a business which people want to do business with you and you make your service count. If you are selling, if you are selling bananas, make it the best banana selling shop. Although you can't become a millionaire by selling bananas. Uh, let me just see how much of all these principles I should share with you. I will. Okay, listen. The, the difference between people who do business and those eventually becoming millionaires is that millionaires multiply themselves. You can't be a hairdresser and be a millionaire. The only way you can be a millionaire is to have 50 shops in Lagos where you are doing hairdressing. And each one of them is coming back to you every day with 20,000 naira in each of those 50 shops. 20, 20,000 naira times 50 shops. How much is that? One million naira every day. But you see this one is there speaking it and they are doing hair in one place. And they are wondering, why am I not breaking through? It is called, it is called... just don't know how many of the principles to share in this 45 minutes. That's why I'm just all over the place. So you've got, don't forget that. The reason many never become millionaires because there are four kinds of people in Lagos. Four. The poor, the middle class, the rich, and the wealthy. Four kinds of people. The poor, the middle class, the rich and the wealthy the poor once in a while encounter money middle class they have an education a nice car and accommodation and they feel like they have arrived and they don't realize they just have a middle class life the reason many families who create wealth lose it is that the man who worked hard to create the wealth raised middle class children, sends them to Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge. Those ones now came speaking like parrots but cannot run anything. So they have a middle class life. Am I making sense to you? You people are so quiet. So there are four kinds of people in Lagos. The poor. How do you rate poverty? Poverty is if you cannot survive 90 days without a salary. You are poor. Doesn't matter how much you earn. If you lose your job today and you can't survive three months, you are poor. And the Bible even has three grades. Poor, poorer, poorest. The Bible says one man came and invaded Israel and carried people away. Then he left the poorest. Anyone, liability, Emma Banlo. So there's the poor. Then there's the middle class. The middle class. A good chunk of people who live like I do in Lekki, are middle class and they don't realize that they are not wealthy. 
all they have is the car, some professional job. They are either renting, or okay, let's say even if they own a house. But they are middle class. Then the third is the rich. The rich person truly has made money. It's probably worth more than a million dollars. But he likes to show it. He likes to show it. Wealthy people who are really wealthy, unless you know them closely or you see the impact of what they are doing, they are not the one to wear designer things per se. Whenever I want to fly, whenever I want to fly, I'm always observing when we are at the boarding gates. The guys who are carrying all manners of Louis Vuitton, uh, all kinds of names. When they, we, they begin to call us to come in, as you call me long wall. I expect to meet them in first class. I fly first class. I'm expecting to meet them there. I don't see them. Because they want to show that they are rich. But the wealthy don't of necessity do that. Are you getting something? I said, are you getting something? So listen. God wants you to be wealthy. Psalm 66, 12. Says you've caused men to ride over our heads. We've been through fire and through water. But you brought us out and into a wealthy place. I'd like you to scream, wealthy place. Wealthy. Say it louder, wealthy place. wealthy place. Say it one more time, wealthy place. Wealthy. If I don't go very far in what I teach today, because I just am saying in my head, hey, what do I teach these people? Let me just quickly tell you. A wealthy place requires a vehicle to take you there. Let me to put Deuteronomy 28 from verse 5 to 12 on the screen. Deuteronomy 28 verse 5 to 12 on the screen. You need a vehicle to take you to the wealthy place. Bless shall your basket be. Somebody say basket. Okay, go down, go on, go on. And blessed shall thou be when thou comest from the... Go to verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8. For your storehouse. Okay, now leave verse 8 there. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto do. And she shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. There's also another place where it says he will bless your hand, the work of your hand. I don't know which verse. One of the verses says he will bless the work of your hand. So I want you to take note. In Deuteronomy 28, there are three vehicles. Work of hand, basket, storehouse. Work of hand, basket, storehouse. Work of hand is salary. And that's all. It just fills your hands. Basket is small business. SME. Small and medium enterprise. Storehouse, Deuteronomy 28 verse 8, is when you are now hiring 50 people, 100 people. That is a storehouse business. So if you want to get to the wealthy place, you need to have your vehicle that will take you there. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. They have to give thee rain on, to give rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand. All right. So this one talks of hands. And that's the problem. Like I told you, the colonial masters taught us to just be people who worked hand. Hand. Before they came, our people were business people, albeit limited. If a hunter, if a man is a hunter, that's what he did. And you had to buy from him. If a man is a farmer, you had to buy from him. Whatever he did was his.
But then they took away the business capacity. And listen, listen. There is no CEO of a Nigerian bank of a salary of a million dollars. None. Of course, they'll get through shares and dividends that will qualify them to say, okay, they get that much. But in salary, there is no, no, we must not even talk of public service. The official salary of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is 1 million and 26,000 naira, 26, naira. 1 million and 26,000 naira. So, work of hand is limited. The next thing is basket. Someone say basket. Listen to me. Until you have your own business, God cannot transfer to you all that he has been keeping for you. Until you have your own medium for receiving it, you need to have your own basket, your own business. Then after you started your basket, you need to now move to the level where you have a storehouse level. Storehouse level is when you begin to hire other people. Hire other staff. When you enter that level, things begin to change. So in order for you to really prosper, walk in financial dimension to the which God wants you to walk, Number one, you must dream great dreams. What's your dream? Dream great dreams. What is your dream? What is your dream? Have a one-year dream, a two-year dream, a three-year dream, a five-year dream. A dream of what you want to achieve. A dream of the kind of finance you want to have. Part of my dream was that when my sons will get married, to give them a house each. And I fulfilled my dream. I married into a boys' quarter as an assistant pastor in Shomolu Four Square. The church said they can't even pay fully for the boys' quarter. One thirty naira they couldn't pay. There was money in the account, but they want to. They don't want to pay. They paid hundred. So I prayed that. I will give my sons a house. And my new vision, and which I'm carrying out, is being responsible for the education of my grandchildren to master's level. So even the one that is just one plus now, going to a very private play school, 1,500 pounds a month I'm the one paying for all four grandchildren it's not an entitlement to my sons that's the problem of this generation the feeling of I'm entitled it is rather a dream of a man who believes in Proverbs 13 22 a righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children but you see, please connect all I'm saying today. You can't leave an inheritance for your children's children if you are doing work of hand alone. So everyone who's here, and I see a lot of young faces, get your side hustle. Don't resign from your work, but get your side hustle. Start something on the side. I see we're, getting, I see we're going home yesterday. I saw something. A young man on the road that will eventually lead to my estate. He put on a tie and he's holding three packs of fruit salad to sell. I think it must have just occurred to him. If people see me properly dressed, they'll know that I'm responsible. It's just that I want to do something. So, if you want to make an impact, you cannot but have a great dream. Number two. Find a problem to solve. 
Many years ago, I used to teach that you should follow your passion. I have since corrected myself. Don't follow passion. Follow problem. Don't follow your passion. Find a problem and solve. Microsoft is solving a computer problem. Facebook is solving a, a, a relationship problem. Amazon is solving a logistics problem. If you look around Nigeria, there are a thousand and one problems which you can solve, which you can answer, which you can, either you and a couple of friends can come together. But then if you are coming together with a couple of friends, never do anything word of mouth. It must be clearly written, it must be proper, and it must be legal, and it must be contractual. Uh, when I say contractual, okay, one of the books there, the book on perpetuating wealth, I, I wrote 10 things that make a, an agreement legal. I cover every area when it comes to wealth creation. You need to find a problem. Find a problem. Many years ago, in this Lagos, we all drank water from the tap. So three friends started the first bottle, bottled water. What was the name? Ragolis. R A standing for Rashid. R A G standing for Rashid Badamosi. And then his friends at the O L I S. Yeah, three men. They solved the problem. They saw that it is being done abroad, so they brought it here. So they, everyone is, of course, every time you start something new, Nigerians will copy. They will copy it right, Papa. But find a problem and solve. That is where your wealth. That's where your wealth is. That's where your wealth is. Stop saying I studied. And I have a degree. Uh, it is not in Nigeria alone anymore. In the UK now, a thousand degree holders are pursuing one job. So don't you ever think it's only Africa. Find a problem and solve. Find a problem and solve. That, I'm giving you the practicals of wealth creation now. I could shout and pour oil on you. And go. But the reason the church continues to struggle is that the principles that lead to wealth, many have disconnected. They say, But I bring my tithe. Your tithe is not the source of your wealth, but it is your access gates. You want me to prove it? Put Malachi 3:10 on the screen. Your tithe is your access gate to your wealth. Malachi 3.10. Help me to put it on the, on the screen. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Prove me now and see uh, here with said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out, what? Huh? No, no, no. A. Why A? A blessing. An idea, a window, a creative idea. So God does not drop money on you because you tithe it. After I bring my tithe, I should wait for a creative idea, a blessing. He said, I will open, in fact, King James, windows of heaven there. The word there is not windows of heaven, it's floodgates. A floodgate is used to lock out water. We have it on the River Thames in London. Because the east of London is below sea level. Sometimes they lock it when the sea rises because it can flood East London. So God is saying, I will flood your life with abundance. But the abundance I'm going to flood your life with is a blessing. A blessing. A window, a creative idea, a, a connection. And many have been given connections, but they didn't know how to use it. Follow a problem and solve it. Follow a problem and solve it. Number three, 
Find your unique gift. What's your gift? What's your ability? Find your unique gifting. Find and develop your unique gift. Find and develop your unique gift. Find and develop your unique gift. Find it, develop it. Because your future is in the gifting that God has placed in you. To one, He gave five talents, each according to His ability. Find your unique gift, the skill in which you are trained, the natural ability and inborn traits you have, the supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. Do not spend your life in what you are not good at. Look at what. Look at your life and check what got you the most result. That's where your gift area is. Find your unique gift and develop it. And after you've developed your unique gift, begin your business. Then when you begin your business, I've just told you how to really break into the millions. Open multiple sites. Multiply your time. If you don't multiply your time, you can never really enter the realms of abundance. You have to multiply your time. You have to have several places running at the same time. Are you getting something? I said, are you getting something? Number four, see yourself as self-employed. See yourself as self-employed. Unless you reach the place where you understand that my own business, my own vision is what will work for me, you may not be able to break into the realm of finance you desire. See yourself as self-employed. Even now when you are working for someone, think of, a, of the company like yours. Put your strength in it. Help them while, they are, while you are working for this man. Put all your strength. Because when you now face your own, the way you behaved here is the way you will behave in your own. If you are faithful in another man's thing, you'll be faithful in your own. Many years ago, my father-in-law used to be a furniture maker along with pastoring before he came full time. And he would train men. He had one guy who came to learn to be a furniture maker. But this guy, when other apprentices are working hard, will never do anything. Other apprentices will challenge him. I say, but you are not doing anything. He say, I'm reserving my energy for when I start my own business. Up till now, he's still in reserve. Because if you are not faithful in another man's thing, you can't be faithful in yours. Behave like you are self-employed. Commit yourself with such strength. Number five, commit to excellence. Be good at something. All successful people you know, commit to excellence. Commit to excellence. Every successful person you know, they commit to excellence. Number six, Obey the law of demand. Obey the law of demand. Is your idea being demanded for? Is your vision being demanded for? Don't write a book nobody wants to read. Don't start a business nobody wants to engage in. I know jam wastes people's time and makes people go study what they don't want. But if it's possible, don't throw yourself into what does not have an atmosphere of demand. You see this one, what did you read? B business administration. Another one, business administration. They don't understand the business itself, let alone administer it. So many are just going because they need to have a degree. They need to say, I finished in a university. Obey the law of demand. Obey the law of demand in such a way that it is something that people need now. Number seven. Have an automated and repeatable system. Have an automated and repeatable system. What is automated and repeatable system? 
automated and repeatable system means that what I was saying earlier, where the person who opened the hairdresser's place, the same I think is being repeated in all the shops. In all the shops. In all the shops. Fifty shops. They were doing so many hair. And on from each shop the person is expecting at least twenty thousand. So the repeatable an automated system creates the atmosphere for wealth. Number eight. Apply the principle of leverage. L-E-V-E-R-A-G-E. Apply the principle of leverage. I like you to say leverage. Please say it one more time. Leverage. Apply the principle of leverage. You cannot create wealth if you do not know how to leverage. What is leverage? Inside every car, outside there, there's possibly a jack to lift the car when the tire goes bad. How big is the jack compared to the car? Very small. How come it can lift the car? Because inside the jack, 2,000 years ago, a philosopher called Aesop discovered the lever, which is the, for the one that is extended of called lever or leverage. He discovered the lever and it became something being used so that a small thing lifts a big thing. If you want to create wealth, listen, you must be ready for leverage. And by leverage, I mean OPM, OPK, OPC, not to dwell. OPM is other people's money. How many of you have money in a savings account? I mean, savings account. How many of you have money in a savings account? I can guarantee you they don't give you more than 1% or less. The bank is shaving you. How much are they giving it out in loans? Between 15 and 18. So they gave you 1% and they gave it out at what? 15. But you know people will still borrow it. OPM. Many people talk of Dangote's wealth, but they don't realize that Dangote uses OPM, other people's money. He's using your money. He's exposed to all the banks in Nigeria. I am very sure every day those banks are praying, Dangote, because if it goes down, they will go down. He He owes all of them. He knows how to do business. There is a challenge in the church. Our pastors tell us not to borrow. We need to know which one we should not borrow and which one we should borrow. Never borrow to make your life look nice. That is bad debt. Oh, no man, anything but love. Proverbs 22 verse 7. The rich rule over the poor. Borrowers are servants of lenders. That is the kind of borrowing you must not get into. Don't get into borrowing that makes you a servant to the lender. But there is the one. If they gave you, I mean Julius Baga did this in Kurudu Road the first time it was done. How many of you know that it was Julius Baga who did it? I was a student in Ikorodu Bible School, and I had to follow this road whenever I came to town. So I knew it was Julius Baga doing this road that time. Julius Baga would not put their penny down. They would collect money from a bank. That's how big businesses do their work. Where you have the cash to do it, fine. But dilution is necessary for expansion. Dilution is necessary 
for expansion. I have about 10, 15 more, 10, 12 more minutes. So listen. You need to use other people's money. Other people's money. Don't go and borrow for nothing's sake. But borrow when you want to carry out a project. Don't say, ah, and they taught us not to borrow. You will not be able to carry out a major project. You will not be able to carry out a major vision of your life. You might need it to be able to do some things. One of my companies, I have a few companies, about 10. One of my companies is about to build 32 apartments in Lekki. We are going to borrow 40% of the cost of building. And raise the remaining in selling, in selling the, the apartments before they are built, during, built, during being built, and after. In other words, what you are doing is you are using leverage. You could have struggled. You could have laid the foundation and be waiting for years. But other people's money. The OPC, other people's credibility. Don't misuse it, but use it. If you know somebody who can endorse you, someone who can help you, someone who can push you up, connect with them. Make them your mentor. Make them your financial mentor, your financial advisor. Have different kinds of mentors. Have financial mentors. Have spiritual mentor. Have mentors in the area where you want, to pro- you want to prosper. You need OPC. Other people's credibility. You need OPK. Other people's knowledge. Other people's knowledge. You need it. There are about, there are about seven of those OPs. I can't give all of them to you now. Number nine, create multiple streams. Create multiple streams. In the book of Genesis, Genesis, I believe chapter one, the Bible says the river that came out of Genesis, out of Eden, broke into four and flowed in four directions to water the land. Why will God Create four rivers for one garden. When only Adam and Eve are still living there. That that shows you multiple streams. Four streams. If they can find that verse for me, I'll be glad. Four streams flowed out of Eden. But many of us are living on one stream. Salary. That's why we cannot afford to lose the job. Whereas when you have four streams, it means if one is not flowing well, the second is flowing. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Next verse. The name of the first is Pison, that is which compassed the whole land of Havilah. Where there is gold. This one, Python, means free flow. Every month, it is just free flowing. Every month, free flowing. Next one. Go on. The next verse, please. The next verse. And the name of the second river is Gaihon. This one means sweet water. Sweet river. There should be an income in your life which is, is a quiet, ah, you know, you are eating the thing, the people don't know money is coming to you from this area. This is the second river. Third river, and the name of the, the name, the same composite, the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. Hidekel is like an arrow. Rapid like an arrow. Rapid like an arrow. Non-stop. Hitting the target. 
That kind of favor is coming to your house. That kind of income is coming to your life. That kind of breakthrough is coming to your life. So this third one, he the care. Rapid like an arrow. You've seen those kind of river. They'll be shooting. It's moving. Rapid like an arrow. The fourth river is the river Euphrates. The word Euphrates is the same word as Pharez. All many, many tekel Pharez. 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 Euphrates means breakthrough. So the fourth river in your life should be the river of breakthrough money. Breakthrough kind of money. That when it arrives like this, even your neighbors know that something has happened to you. The music changes. Your attitude changes. Four rivers. If you don't have four rivers, you just struggle. That's the truth. And guess what? Dangote has 63 rivers. He has 63. 63 companies. But believers... We are all busy just speaking in tongues. We do not realize that God has created a platform. You have to do something to make it flow to you. Four of us. So you need to create multiple streams. I like you to say multiple streams. Say it one more time. Multiple streams. Say it louder. Multiple streams. Please. When a person is teaching on finance like this, there's never enough time. So what I'm trying to let you know is that it's great you have a job. You're able to put food on your table. But your life is bigger than that. And if anybody asks you, why do you want to be wealthy? Tell them, you do more good with wealth you can never do any good with poverty those stories here yesterday of uncles who would not help me when I was young and today I grab all their grandchildren and send them to university not just them pastor talked about coming to meet me on the golf course here in the Keja Golf I was playing golf one day and the girl who was helping us pull our bags Spoke very good English. And I thought, uh-uh. you speak very well. What are you doing? Why are you here doing caddy job? She said, I've tried jump five times. And I've not had admission. I just sent her to Ghana, pay her university fees. Four years. Her mom is a cleaner at the airport. Her father is in Portaco. The family is in disarray. The girl will be graduating this July. The second one, her mom sells rice to the people at the university, at the golf course. She came to me. Hey, I want to go to Polytechnic. I sent her. When she finished OND, I didn't even. I said, Is that what you want? When she finished OND, she came back. I finished OND. I want to go and do HND. So why do you want to do HND? Nigeria has an attitude towards HND. Why don't you do university? She said, ah, dude. I just called my son in Ghana who has a university. This guy did uh, hospitality and hotel management. And that's what you offer in your school. She said, yeah, she can come. Straight away, she, went. she entered 200 level there. I'm paying her school fee. I don't know. I don't even know. I, do, I think her dad may have died a long time. I don't know her siblings. I met her mom once, one of the women, the woman who sells rice to the people there. You do more good. You do more good. You touch lives. You bring dignity to people, not just yourself. One of my cousins passed on practically adopted her daughter and her son. Picked her daughter out of all those Meron place. You know Meron? Emma. Emma, you be back Emma. 
pick out of those men on place. Send her to Lautech. Made her live alone in her own room. Everything. In fact, they were voting her the most sophisticated girl on campus. As she finished, send her to University of Bedford. Paid 34,000 pounds to see her through a master's degree. Broke cannot do that. Whereas her grandfather mocked my father. My father picked a pot of cola nut when he went on holiday as a soldier. When he was on leave and he picked a pot of cola nut and over. Yeah. As it's often oko wa da ko da ko. When God blesses you, you are able to touch lives. You are able to make impact. I can't begin to recount catalogs of how many people I've sent to university. I just can't recount. If I went to university, took off in Ode King's University, belonging to KRCC. The first year was 100% scholarship and 40% of it was me and my wife paying for other people's kids. Journalists will never see that. They, unless, they only abuse churches. I'm about to close. So remember, create that platform. Then, find something that multiplies your money. Real estate multiplies money. Creating a good business multiplies money. And uh, if you understand the stocks and shares, they can multiply your money. But if I were you, I would look at real estate in Lagos. Don't let Amonile discourage you. There is wealth to be made in Nigeria. There's wealth to be made in Lagos. In case you don't realize. What I taught you today, I practiced. When I was a young man, at the age of 14, I started selling for other people. So when I was a young pastor, when I lived in the place I told you, at the age of 27, I built my first house. How did I build it? As a bachelor pastor, this particular spot where we are in is part of my story. There used to be a union bank outside there. I don't know if it's still there. That's where I bought my first BTA, Basic Travel Allowance. They will give you 560 pounds if you bring 500 Naira. Naira was so powerful. I was given 560 pounds. I went to England. And then I went to Italy, bought musical instruments. Next door here used to be the Cross Bookstore. I don't know if they are still there. No longer there. I will leave the musical instruments there. And I will sell. I will give them a token for my space where I was keeping my instruments. I will bring drum sets. I will bring guitars. I bring keyboards. I built the first house. I saved money to go to Canada to do my master's. When Foursquare now said, go to England to pastor for us. I took the money to England, but still kept buying musical instruments to Nigeria. Kept buying musical instruments. As the musical instrument was doing well, Reverend Chris Jordan, I will never forget him, Christ Chapel, dropped the seed in my spirit. It was the days of Abacha, or Babangida or Abacha, I'm not sure. But you cannot carry currency out of Nigeria. So, this man said, why don't you bring books into Nigeria for us? We can't find Christian books. That's how I started Matison Media. I don't know if anyone ever knew of Matison Media. It used to be the biggest bookstore Christian in Nigeria. We were on Jibo, where Ekene Dilichuku is now. And we were also on Allen. 
we became representatives of 30 publishers in America. 30 publishers. You wanted their books, they'll tell you go and meet Martinson Media. God kept giving me different streams. As the money from the books came, I didn't know what to do. That's how somebody told me, oh, someone wants to sell land in Moe, will you buy? I said, yes. What's available? They said 30 acres. I bought 30 acres. Then I went back and bought another 200. Then I went back and bought another 411. Then I went back until I bought 900 acres. Don't be jealous. Say, praise God. You see the chain link in my various streams. My various streams. I learned when I was a young man. I first went to CAC before I went to Fosco and I saw how ministers were not properly paid. So I made up my mind. I have a calling, but I'll run my business because I knew I have an anointing for business. God has prospered my hand. And that's prospered what I have done. Uh, I will only refer to the Moe land. There are others. But see, you need a vehicle. Real estate is a vehicle. Don't tell me, but pastor, I don't have much. Pay off your debt first. One. Two. Yeah, I have mocked savings accounts. But if that's all you can find, put your money there. Three, once you find a people who are selling land, even if it is far, but it has good documentation, buy. In property, property is like five fingers. Finger number one is documentation. If document is not good, don't touch. Because if you go to court... The court recognizes documentation first, occupation second. If you are in occupation of the land, you have a second upper hand. Three, development. If you have done, even if it's fencing, you did. You have document, you occupied, you developed. Ah, you have a voice. So even if it's one plot, you want to know why? And I was a young pastor there. We were the ones who bought land for four square coca, 3,000 naira. We were the ones who bought land for four square in solo, 1,000 naira. And we bought two plots near, uh, what's the name of the area now? A palace, Agor Palace. There are now plots for 100 million in Agor Palace. Don't tell yourself, ah, it's difficult. Yeah, I used to think that way. When I was a young pastor there, somebody asked me if I wanted a plot in Okwebi. That time it was 500 naira. I couldn't afford it, but I went back and bought for 10 million. Did you ever visit me in my house in Okwebi? Okay. And then I sold, I think it's the land the guy bought, not the house. I sold it for 150 million. I built a house on it. The guy bought it and broke down the house. So it must be the land he wants. I bought it 10 million, built for 55, it cost to 65, sold it for 150. Yes, you are taught to be profitable. How many of you are ready to really be profitable? Listen, look at me. You are going to so prosper and you are going to do well. I just told you now. Somebody will ridicule. That Union Bank, the reason I remember it was that they were not processing my, my BT. No, the first BT I ever bought was National Bank Marina. I don't think National Bank exists anymore. It was National Bank Marina. First one, 1978, 43 years ago, was my first uh, BTA. My second BTA was this Union Bank. They were not processing it on time. I had a shavings account. And they had no respect for savings account in those days. So when I was screaming, you are not processing my basic travel allowance on time. 
one woman answered at, on the, from her desk, what kind of account do you have here? I said, I have a savings account. She said, you have no account, my son. That was the day I made up my mind. I must be blessed. I shall be wealthy. So listen, I see your story change. I'm going to just pray and hand over the microphone so I can quickly dash home and come back for the evening meeting. I believe go for some great prophetic service tonight. But before I do so, praise the Lord. If you brought the seed I called for yesterday night, if you have it here, please stand up. I'd like to pray for you. If you brought the seed I called for yesterday night, if you, if you have it here, please stand. If you don't have it here, that's okay. I just, I'll just pray for everyone generally. Okay, some people have it here. All right, great, great, great. Please come, come. Those who have it here, come, 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 come. We're in your presence. Let it rain. Oh, let it We're in your presence. Hey! Let it rain all oh, the rain. Let it, Let it fall on me. Open, Open the, the floodgate flood. in abundance. In abundance. And cause and your, your rain to fall, to fall on me. me. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for this man and woman who are sowing seed to celebrate the years they've lived on earth. Father, give them prolonged years. Let them live long. Let them live strong. Let them live blessed. Let them live victorious. Let everything they touch be blessed. Increase them on every side. Favor them on every side. Show them grace. Show them your blessing. Give them unusual testimony. Give them unusual grace. And everyone who is giving online, I pray for you too that the Lord will favor you. The Lord will bless you. And the Lord will increase you. You will not sow for trouble. You will not sow for battles. But these will be the beginning of new beginnings. The beginning of new favors. New testimonies. New open doors. New grace. In Jesus name. Amen, 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 amen. Please put the seed on the altar. And everyone in the house, please stand up. Because you move mountains. Come on. You cause walls to fall. With your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible, and we stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, pray for everyone who is in this hall. Today is not just a teaching, it's a transfer of understanding and wisdom. Let this revelation move them forward. Let their levels change. Let their stories change. Let their levels change. Let their stories change. Let today be the poorest they will ever be. Favor them beyond measure. 
Increase them beyond measure. Bless them beyond measure. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name. I've written so many books on finance. They are out there. They will bless you. God bless. the Lord. Alright, before Papa uh, goes, we're able to take two questions, just two. So raise your hand and I will exercise some powers this morning. Two. Okay, come quickly. The young man there. Let's come to the front quickly. And the young and the woman. Please come. Just come. Just tell us your name and what the question is. I was telling about um, some time ago about your mentor. Now, with your level of wisdom, who is your mentor? Because for someone to be your mentor. Okay, so the question is who is, your who mentor? is mentoring you? All right. Thank you. We'll take the second question. Good morning. When you were talking What's about the name? Tolu Brenda Buku. Okay. When you were talking about property, you said there were five fingers. You said the first was documentation, the second was. Occupancy and then you stop. I'd like you to complete. You have to go to my paid seminar, brother. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Okay, ah, Pastor, I've made you get the things some people are paying 200 pounds for every month. The first question wasn't clear. Is he saying, he's asking that are you consciously mentored? Are you being mentored and who is mentoring you as okay. Pastor Matthew Ashimolo? Oh, all right, all right, all right. One of the things you've got to realize is that you must continue to draw from other people. You must continue non-stop to draw from other people. For ministry, there was a point in my own personal ministry, even though I am Bishop Jakes and friends, I would spend as much as $7,000 to buy his products just to draw from him. Or when I felt, ah, I needed to share a problem and find solution. And I felt, who could have gone through what I've gone through? It was Bishop Jakes I spoke to. I remember one time we were being attacked by the British government and nobody had ever experienced anything on the magnitude of what I was experiencing. It was Bishop Jakes I turned to. And by the time he finished, it was obvious to me that he was saying, ah, this one will pass. And it is out of it that God will give you your resurrection. So, in mentoring, you create upward, downward, and lateral. And not just one. When it comes to financial mentoring, I will say, I still take seminars, paid seminars, from people who will charge as much as between three to $10,000 for a seminar. $10,000 to attend their finance seminar. But by the time they finish with you, you also are looking for the world to conquer. So I get, co- I get mentored financially. I get mentored spiritually from, uh, like I just told you about Bishop Jakes. Then you find that when you have friends who are able to speak to you, even in the speech, they are being honest with you and you are being honest with them. When I and Bishop Boydepo sit down, uh, I don't know how many of you saw when he came to my house. Okay, it was uh, on social media. It was a lot of laughter, but it's a lot of talking. Who could say, do ministry this way, change this one, change that one. Or when they were building uh, Canaan land, and he knew that he doesn't have the time to do all the study, he just called me, Pastor Matthew, send me all your messages. I need to be hearing somebody else. I need to be hearing somebody else while I am building. So, we all get mentored. And then when it comes to people you look up to spiritually, I could be very, very prophetic. I'm praying that I'll do so tonight. 
But when it comes to my own issue, I don't see it. But there's a spiritual father. I will call up and say, Baba, this is happening. And this one, this man is a very strange man. You just say, okay, Jacob Agra. You just stop her. I'm thinking, Lord, this is another level. <laughs> so, I could be very prophetic, but I don't see my own. So if I need direction, prophetically, I turn to him. And then there have been times also when God will show me a revelation. I'm close to Pastor Adeboye, but God will show me a revelation for something. I mean, um, I think it was December last year, the Lord showed me a revelation. I saw it in my, in my dream that I made him shoes made to measure. Shoes made to measure in the United Kingdom are very expensive because all our shoes, one machine just cuts the thing. But it means they had to make it. And the Lord was instructing me. You know, so I had to go make to measure. I had to ask him to please help me to draw his leg on a paper because of the closeness and the fact that I can talk on a one-on-one. So we all get mentored. Anyone who does not connect and is disconnected is a danger. I hope I answered your question. All right. Thank you very much. The second question is, while oh, you were speaking, the lady with the property. you spoke about five fingers that uh, land rest on. Documentation. First one is documentation. Second one is occupation. The third one is development. The fourth one is your legal representation. Don't get charge and bail lawyer. Ogun State jumped on my land. And I knew that uh, I wanted to fight the state. Because the governor who was there before was dodging me. We were friends, so. And he was the one who jumped on my land and he was dodging me. God catch him. We meet his up plane. I said, uh-huh, you were dodging me. I need my land back. He said, I should go and pay 1.7 billion. Tell me about 1.7 billion. He said, my Lord, go for your job. I can't make him. Come out. You were wrong. So we prayed for the right man to come in who happens to also be my friend. And when he came in, I said, sir, I have all my documents to correct. I have still of on all my land. I don't know why the state will try to reverse the sea of O. And my land is peculiar. The pillars are, are state pillars. So what we did was, as that governor was leaving, one month before he left, I just got an SAN, a senior advocate who charged me a lot of money to file the case. So that when they see that an SAN is dealing with them, they know that this is no small matter. So God gave us victory. So your legal representation is very important. And then the last one is goodwill with those who sold to you. Goodwill with those who sold to you. Ammonilas uh, can be difficult. But you need to know them. The majority of them in Lagos are Muslims. They will always come back to you at Ilaya, at uh, all sorts. At Irigodunwa, Pastor Nimi. You know, but nonetheless, you send them money. When you do those things, they begin to honor you, they regard you, they respect you. In fact, when they have land that is emergency, it is you they remember who should come and buy it. It's like an acre of land. They came to me on emergency to buy somewhere in the bedroom for seven million. It's now worth like hundred million. They needed it urgently, but they couldn't think of someone else. So that last one is goodwill. Occupation um, documentation. In Nigerian court of law, finger number four five does not matter. But in the Nigerian Court of Law, documentation 
once you enter the court and you have a seal of woe that cannot be invalidated or a governor's consent and it's genuine, you are beginning to have an upper hand. And you are in occupation. You have a second upper hand. You have actually friends and they did not challenge you. You have a third upper hand. So if there was an issue, you have a legal representative that knows law, not the one that doesn't know what he's doing. I hope I answered. Finally, Pastor, what's your take on cryptos as a wealth creation vehicle? Cryptos. Cryptocurrency. On my Money Master class platform, I've told them that I'm not going to teach on cryptocurrency yet because I'm biased. And I said, I might now carry my bias and hinder their wealth. I said, you are likely to prosper from buying into cryptocurrency. But because I am biased, let me keep quiet until I study it enough. The reason for my bias is that my little understanding of money is that it must have a beginning and an end. There has to be accountability somewhere. Cryptocurrency started by some guy called Sayayoshi or something like that, whom nobody knows who he is, and he started a system. It's a bit complicated. You have to be really very good and uh, educated to understand how the cryptocurrency works. There are now up to 5,000 different currencies, up to 5,000. But the challenge is that they are invisible money. Of course, the world is going to go that way. The day is going to come when Nigeria will have to use our phones to buy things. They do it in Zimbabwe already because their currency fell. They were using dollar initially, but then there was not enough dollar to flow in the community. So people were buying credit from Econet. You remember Econet? The owner is from Zimbabwe, so it's still there. So he now created Echo Cash. Actually, Echo Cash is being managed for him by a KICC member. And uh, Echo Cash runs 60% of Zimbabwe's spending. We will one day use that invisible money. But as it is right now, cryptocurrency... You can't see where it is going. There is a rush to buy. And the day there might be a crash, it's going to be a devastating crash. Maybe those who joined early are going to make a lot of money. I know one thing about real estate. Real estate is the only estate that is real. Land never dies, never moves. I'm teaching on Saturday on 75 things about land on my money masterclass, matthewashimolo.com. You find that when it comes to land, it continues to increase in value. Location, location, location. In fact, with land, you know when you missed it. My lawyer, Tokumbo Adesoya, used to be on the board of GTB, begged me begged me to buy 1,000 square meters in banana for 42 million. I said, no. My love, in acres, me beg you. The land I bought could not be excised. That's where the deep sea harbor is now. I didn't get my land. Banana went from 42 for that 1,000 square meters to something like 600 million. So I'm still kicking myself every day. With cryptocurrency, I have trepidations, but I don't like transferring it to others. So I told the people on the Money Masterclass platform that until I study it and take a view different from my buyers, I cannot teach it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, I'm sure we can do better than that.